Today's lecture is going to be a bit short. Um, so this is the first footnote of this course. So if you see my face, consider this a face review. Okay, so I don't have much time, only about 20 minutes. So yeah. the proof is relatively short. And this is just a lemma, which leads to our um, third theorem of the course, of course, in measure theory. sets, um, which I will call P, with our subsets of Rn, are uh, the best measurable. And recall from the original lecture that what we mean by the best measurable is that there exists a the best measure, whether outer or real the best measure on that set. So we can cover the set with a finite or an infinite amount of um, lengths or volumes in order to determine its true area, its true volume or whatever. So we're generalizing it to Rn so that we can take into account not only length but volume. So of course the best measure as you as you guys recall is the generalization of the notion of length or volume. So we're just proving that every affection set can be measured and that um, that precise measure, of course, is that precise measure of affection you have for that person. Okay. So we're just gonna prove this lemma. So this is very crucial. <coughs> this lemma is very crucial when you're asked in, uh, in our exams to prove uh, that a certain affection set is um, of course, we can find its precise measure of affection. So, so first, <coughs> consider um, consider an n-dimensional rectangle R. So R subset of R n. Okay. So consider this. Um, and I have my E R. So this is what I want to show I can cover by this rectangle, or I can partition this rectangle um, and this set. Right? Now I can partition this rectangle and then sort of use it to cover this set and show that those guys are the best measurable. Or at least it's translation invariant, because the best measurable itself is translation invariant. Okay, so I will now consider Positive translation constant. Uh, translation. Which I which is for epsilon greater than zero. So um, yes. Um, now there exists an open cover, which is um, this set, so this set of all rectangles are I, such that um, I inside the natural numbers. So I is indexed by the natural numbers. Of course, you can't have an R1 half, right? These things can only be labeled um, with things that make sense when it comes to sequences. Okay. So, um, so an open cover of E. Of course, by rectangles R I. Rectangles R I into a oh no, um, such that such that uh, the Laplace outer measure of E plus this translation constant um, 
We use var epsilon because the original epsilon would look somewhat like this, and we already use that for set membership, so we use var epsilon here. Okay, so I have my var epsilon, so add that to the Lebesgue outer measure of E, and that would be greater than or equal to the sum running from I to infinity um, of the Lebesgue measures of these rectangles. So we're sort of we're sort of assuming already that um, these sequence of rectangles are the best measurable in and of themselves. Okay. So yeah. So from here we can decompose. We can decompose um, R i. So each R i um, into a disjoint. Uh, I1 and then dot S I N. Of course, N again indexed by the natural numbers. Um, and the reason why we're saying R I is because we're decomposing each rectangle in this set over here. So this set here, which is the cover of our original set E or our affection set E, um, what we're saying here in this part now is that we can dec decompose each of these rectangles or these um, hypercubes. Um, into a disjoint and finite union of other rectangles, which involves you know R I tilde, which I will define, and these other rectangles S sub I sub one. Um, the reason why the I is maintained here is because we want to make sure that it's really a partition of that of that specific rectangle. It's not a partition of all of them. Okay, so we're specifying which um, rectangle we're um, yeah. So let's say. R i or R one. So the first rectangle in this cover of E. So this would be R one tilde, and this would be S one one, and then you know all the those other finite union of rectangles um, until S one n. Okay. Okay. So such that so such that R sub i is equal to R sub i tilde. Plus the union um, j equals one to n of s sub i sub j or s sub i j. So that's not big n, that's rather small n. So we're taking the finite union of these rectangles and adding it with this. So what we're basically saying is that these partitions or these um, these rectangles, when we add them all together, gives us the entire rectangle R i. Okay, so yeah, and so you would see now that R i filled up is basically just R i subtracted with these rectangles over here. Okay, so and we define the interior or R i uh, dash is equal to R i intersect. subset R of um, this here, this subset R, rectangle R of Rn. Okay, I know the notation is a bit confusing, but um, that's what we need. And because of that, um, S sub I, J, is a subset of the complement of that rectangle. So what I mean by C of R is its complement. So I know that some lecturers or some instructors would write it as R, R to the C, um, but I like writing it as C of R. So as I say, it's the complement of R. So it, it gets the point across, okay. So 
from the Karaf Theodori criterion from CC, um, we notice that um, the Lebesgue measure of each rectangle Ri is equal to the Lebesgue measure of R tilde I plus the sum running from J equals 1 to N of the Lebesgue measure of each of these species sub IJ. And the reason why this is true is because the Lebesgue measure itself is sigma additive. So that means if I have the finite union of a bunch of stuff inside it, inside of a set I want to take the Lebesgue measure off, I can basically say that this is equal. So the Lebesgue measure of this union here is the same as the sum of all the individual Lebesgue measures of the parts of this union. Okay? And, um, yeah. So it's the sum of the Lebesgue measure of R I build them. Disrespectful. Okay. So the the best measure of the entire thing is the, the best measure of its individual parts, which is R sub I tilde, and the union of S sub I J. And again, applying sigma additivi additivity, this thing holds. Okay. So, so using this result and rearranging the sum above while relabeling S sub I J into just S I relabel S I J into S I and um, modify the sum modify the sum um, we get we get that the Lebesgue outer measure of E. So I need to extend a bit. Go ahead and merge it. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. So, um. Of the 
best measure of each S sub I. So hence, um, hence the best outer measure of the measure plus the translation constant is greater than or equal to uh, the best outer measure of E intersect R plus the best outer measure. The complement of R. And since zero is arbitrary, uh, this entire expression here just devolves into the the best outer measure of E uh, is greater than or equal to the best outer measure of E intersect R. Plus the best outer measure of E intersect the complement of R. And we have shown through all of these that indeed um, E satisfies the Karakiodori criterion, and so it is thus. Um, so because of that, we can we can define it's the best outer measure to be its regular best measure, and so it is thus the best measure. And yeah, so when something, when a constant is arbitrary, we can essentially remove it from our original expression and end up with something like this. So you'll notice that this is the original Karakudori criterion for a certain subset of Rn to be the best measure. So there's the. I'm sorry for the disruption a while ago. Um, frankly, it's a very disappointing guy, but. So yeah, this is for lemma. So we will ask you guys to um, employ this in your code. Well, uh, or when you when we ask you to construct an affection set and then show that a certain um, map that changes it uh, is cute, we're gonna probably ask you guys to employ this lemma. Okay. So yeah, very one of the most important lemmas here in this course. So that's a good place to stop.